Hi everyone, this is a little short video in response to an online conversation I've been having with Stanton Jones at Forging Futures. I hope you can understand my uh, Devonshire accent. Uh, I'm not actually going to make anything, but I'm just going to point out one or two things about tongs and perhaps uh, a couple of other things. Okay, well I'll swap the lens around. Hopefully I can... Oh, no. I'll have to start again. Hi. Well, here we have a couple of pairs of tongs. One pair is right-handed and one pair is left-handed. This right-handed pair of tongs was made by my father. Uh, one of the last jobs he ever did, I think. And these were made by me probably about 45 years ago when I was his apprentice. Um, growing up left-handed, you get used to using right-handed tools. So I can use right-handed tongs without any problem whatsoever. But if my father ever picked up a pair of my tongs, it would only be about 30 seconds and he'd be throwing them on the floor. What the bloody hell have I got here? Anyway, the actual making process is quite simple. First of all, you cut in the jaw. Just draw that down. Start off with a piece of three quarter square is easiest or round will do. So you roughly forge your jaw. Don't worry about it spreading outwards. You can always deal with that later on. So cut in your jaw and then on the other edge of the anvil cut in at about 45 degrees same thing there don't worry about drawing this out now I watched black bear forge making a pair and he thinned in this piece a lot more than what I have here if your tongues are gonna break they're either gonna break here or across the hole where your rivet is through so Leave as much metal across here as you can. As long as it'll clear this shoulder, that's all you need to worry about. So, for the left-handed tongs, that's cut in there. Right turn at 45 degrees, cut in again. And then for the last drawing down, right turn again. And cut in here. <coughs> like I say, leave plenty of metal in the middle. Don't worry about it being level, you can always knock them about even when they're joined together. You can straighten your jaws up. Now what I notice about most of the tongs that are showing made is that the handles finish up really close together. And I don't like that. They'll pinch the palm of your hand. You need a decent gap in the middle. So the jaw and the handle are sort of cranked so you've got a gap in the middle you can set the handles when when you come to set the jaws to size and to do that you need a piece of something doesn't matter what there we are here's a broken handle off of something to put in between the handles otherwise your handles will just close up and they will be touching by the time you've sized your jaws so these are actually made for 716 i think uh, shoe and steel they would have held but it's a general purpose pair of tongs a lot of the shoe and tongs have a wider jaw but it's shorter but, um, these will hold pretty much anything so put your size piece in like i said something to keep your handles apart obviously your tongues are hot and then you just knock your jaws together to hold the piece of whatever size stock you want them to do that's basically that um Like I say, these handles are welded. This would just have been done with an arc welder, stick welder. 
so you can actually see the weld but like I say they were they were a working pair of tongs they're in no way ornamental they were made to do a job and they've done it very well for 45 years used every day all day long well barring Sundays uh, I might have had to reset them for size a couple of times as the joint is worn I might even possibly have put a new rivet in I can't remember to be honest but uh, like I say they've really done some work as you can see by the rust on the handles they haven't done much since I retired at Christmas uh, the father's tongs there I would say they were welded I can't actually see the weld on there but he was a better workman than I was when I was an apprentice um, of course, originally the handles would have been fire welded on um, and it might be an idea just to jump up the end of the bar you use for the handles that'll give you a bit to, to get rid of your any signs of the weld but uh, with a MIG welder these days I mean you can just stick another bit on there and grind it back to the all looks lovely and invisible and when it comes to drawing down or drawing out if, if you only want to draw out in one direction I notice a lot of people on YouTube they use the flat part of their anvil as you can see mine is pretty rusty it's, I have done a couple of little jobs on it lately but not much um, you'll find it's a lot easier and quicker to draw down stock on the big of your anvil for one thing it'll push it in the direction you want to go if you're drawing down say uh, a thick bar you want more or less the same width but thinner if you do it on the beak of your anvil, the curve of the beak will push the stock in the directions you want it to go instead of splaying it out everywhere. So your hammer blows will count for twice as much. Uh, oh, you used to have a little, I noticed uh, Stanton's anvil, the edges weren't very good on. I have got a little block somewhere that goes in the hardy hole that had four lovely square corners on so if you were cutting in and you wanted a really nice edge to your setting in that would have been done on the block or at least finished off on the block that went in the hardy hole okay I think that's about it thank you very much all the best Stanton